Okay, welcome everyone to this Magicians Without Borders Conversations episode 10. I am so glad that we are here. And as always, I am with Tom. How are you, Tom? I'm terrific, Carlos. And uh, happy, happy, happy to be here. It's so good. So good to have you here, Tom. So how, how was your week? Uh, my week was great. I uh, actually just finished a little while ago um, a magic lesson with a little 10-year-old um, guy who I've been doing magic lessons with for about a year and a half. And he's he's on the spectrum, you know, and uh, he has some autism and he's just amazing the way magic has um, just brought him out of himself and how he uses it to connect with people in a way that he finds hard normally. But doing magic, he's he feels very empowered. So it was a good day being nice. with him. So good. so good to hear that, Tom. So nice that you're here with us. And well, today we have a great guest. Uh, it's amazing that we get, uh, get to have these uh, kinds of guests here in the show and that they are friends of the program. It's so, so cool. Uh, but before we introduce her, do you do you remember the first time you heard about about her? Her name is Jane, Jen Kramer, of course. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, I can't remember when or how we met. I know it was when she was still uh, in high school. And I think I met her, um, her father came along just to make sure I wasn't some sort of weirdo, <laughs> I think, and dropped her off and kind of checked me out. It was at Phantasma. That's the first time I remember. But there may have been something before that. I can't, I can't recall. Okay, but, uh, and 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 for for those that are listening to us uh, right now uh, and might not know who who she is, uh, can you tell us the last time you saw her? When was uh, the last, last time, you time saw I her? saw her? Was just before all this craziness began. We were in Las Vegas in early early March, uh, end of February, and uh, visiting our son, who's uh, a sculptor and living there in Las Vegas. And uh, we went to Jen's show at the Westgate, and it was spectacular. And especially so since everything has closed down, I got to, I got to see it. And actually, it's the second time I've seen her performing. So uh, it was totally wonderful. Uh, so cool, so cool. So Jen Kramer is a performer in Las Vegas. She has her own show at the Westgate Hotel. And uh, she's a friend of the program, right? She's, you know, she's she's so, you know, she's she gets what we do. Yeah. And, and, that, and, and when, when you talk to her, the, the, the few times that I have had the pleasure to talk to her, you can, you can see that, that she really believes in what we do. And they, that she sees the power of magic uh, when done through our program, how 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 amazing uh, it can be. And I'm just so eager to talk to her. Yeah, the last few conversations, uh, she's really been present because we were talking with uh, members, uh, past members, present members, the present president of the Yale Magic Society and our esteemed, wonderful, marvelous Jen Kramer guest tonight is the founder when she was a theater major. And I think she had two or three other majors. I don't know at, at Yale and she founded, and I want to talk with her about that. Oh uh, yes. I, well, I think we all do. So without further ado, here is Jen Kramer. Welcome. So Hi. glad to have you. Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to see you both. Oh, it's so yes, good yes. to see you. Oh, my oh this is so cool. Live this is so from cool, Las Jen. Vegas. Oh, yes. Wow. So, Jen, yeah, where, where are you at right now? 
Yeah, so uh, I am actually right at this moment in Park City, Utah, but uh, oh. I can't wait to be back to Las Vegas and doing my show again. We are currently on pause due to COVID, but hopefully we'll be back soon and I, I can't wait to be back on stage. And uh, it was such a treat, by the way, I was hearing when Tom mentioned when Tom and Janet came to the show and we got to spend yeah. that time together. Oh my gosh, I loved it. So special it was, for me. It was great. So cool. And so what cool. is what is so wonderful, Jen, is that you uh, mentioned Magicians Without Borders and really give it a wonderful place in the opening of your show. And, uh, and then to see that um, was wonderful. Thank you so much for doing that. Oh, it is it is so my pleasure. I know we've talked about this so many times, but Magicians Without Borders is, I mean, I can't say enough wonderful things. I've so admired the work that Magicians Without Borders does ever since I was 12 years old. And uh, it, it really, I mean, just, just the amazing work, Tom, that you and Janet and, and Carlos, that you and the entire group uh, have done all around the world is, uh, it's been so so inspiring and incredible to be a part of and getting the chance to serve on the advisory board is uh i mean i'm just i'm just so happy to to get the chance to spread the word about magicians without borders in my show and to include some uh, video of our trip to india together and yeah. share that uh, with audiences uh, we're awesome. so grateful it's wonderful yeah. wonderful i mean it, it's it's so 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 cool that we can say that a las vegas performer has a video on magicians without borders on their show it's, it's just over the top so we're so grateful jen that you do that you do that every time that you do the show uh, so but, but love magicians without borders love magicians without borders. so the big question is when and where did we meet Oh yeah, do you remember that? Do you remember that, yes. Janet, Janet? Yeah. So Tom and Janet and I first met when I was 12 years old. So can you believe that? 16 years of friendship already. Wow. Wonderful. So I was 12 and I was participating in a summer program at Wellesley College. And I remember- Oh my Tom goodness. Yes, oh. <laughs> that was it. And Tom and Janet had done a workshop for uh, the the students at this program and I just remember being so incredibly inspired and I stayed afterwards at this workshop and talked with Tom and Janet and I remember they were so welcoming and so kind and I thought oh my gosh here are here are two people who share this passion for magic that that I have and I you know I, I absolutely loved magic then and still do yeah. and, and yet Tom and Janet were using magic to do good in the world and to really spread hope and to spread happiness. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is this is something I want to be involved in. And we've we've been friends ever since. Yeah, That's and so then cool. um and then you and what was your friend's name? And um you came and Janet and I were doing uh something at the Omega Institute in Rhinebeck, yes. New York. Yes, Zoe Righteous. Zoe, yes. right, and you two were our assistants. It was called, it had a wonderful title actually. It was the um, the art of magic and the magic of art. And I taught magic with Jen and her friend Zoe half the day to these kids and the other half of the day Janet um, taught them art. And it was it was wonderful. It was oh, that was I, those were such great memories. Yeah. Uh, in fact, those were wonderful times uh, back yeah. all those years ago, and uh, yeah. I definitely cherish those memories with you all. You were still in high school when you did that, right? The Omega thing. I was still in high school, and I just have such such great memories, Tom, of you and Janet would write me these wonderful postcards from all around the world as you would travel. And I mean, that was so special for me because I remember thinking, wow, Tom and Janet are so using magic for good and just being able to hear about all of your adventures and all of the people you were meeting and, and touching with magic and uh, being able to bring smiles to people's faces all around the world. I mean, that that relationship with you and Janet and that friendship through through the years has been just something so so special to me. So Fantastic. cool to hear that story, Tom. Huh? So <laughs> so 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 far away that you that you have forgotten about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe 16 years ago? Wow. That's, that's, Time that's flies. Time flies. Wow. That's for sure. That's great. 
<laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, Jen, I just wanted to ask you, uh, I just wanted to learn a, a little bit more about how and why did you get into magic? Like, what, what was the, the, the first experience that you had with magic and why did you pursue it? When I was 10 years old for my 10th birthday, my uncle Steve gave me the Royal Road to Card magic book. Yeah, nice. And I have that, that very book sitting on my bookshelf to this day. With I saw books. it. I can <laughs> attest to that. That's right. <laughs> Thomas it's in the very book. Shrine, like this precious, precious object in her <laughs> living room under glass, I think. <laughs> I love that book. I, I mean, it is my most treasured physical possession to this day because it, it really was what opened up the world of card magic to me. Started learning magic. My uncle Steve, I, I think he noticed that I had taken an interest in it because he's done magic uh, not as a full time professional, but he had done magic for many years uh, as something that he just loved to do. And I think he would show us uh, some magic at family gatherings and when we would get together. And he must have noticed that I took an interest in it. And so he gave me this book as a birthday present. And I just started performing magic anywhere and everywhere I could. And Met top. I, I, I can't remember which one is it, expert at the card table or Royal Road? To... Royal Road. Aha. Uh -huh. yeah. wow. So cool. So cool. So you, 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 do, do you think that love for magic and performance was, was it part of why you chose to go to Yale to, to pursue a theater degree? Oh yeah, I mean Yale. It's a. It always reminded me of Hogwarts from Harry Potter. So. <laughs> okay. It does. It looks like Hogwarts. It does, right? With the Gothic architecture. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was I was surprised, in fact, that there wasn't already a magic society on campus uh, when I when I first arrived. But but yes, I think um, when I was a, a student at Yale, I majored in theater, as Tom mentioned, and I was really fortunate in that I had terrific professors who. Uh, really welcomed the fact that I loved magic and wanted to incorporate magic into class presentations. And so for my senior thesis project, I was able to perform a magic show. And I think, you know, my Yale experience and my magic experience, uh, you know, really went hand in hand in that mm -hmm. I was able to do so much magic through the Yale Magic Society at Yale and to share magic with the Yale community. Uh, and I just, I, I loved my Yale experience. I knew I wanted to pursue magic, uh, full time. And I think those college years for me were also about figuring out how do I take this thing that I love and how do I turn it into a full time profession and, and yeah. work in a practical sense. Do you know if there ever was a magic society at Yale? Not that I know of. Uh -huh. But I remember being so excited to uh, find some other magicians floating around campus and we started meeting weekly and doing performances for the local community and we connected then with Magicians Without Borders and I'm mm -hmm. so happy that that relationship yeah. has only continued to flourish and grow through the years. Um, um, just, just to remind people who may not have been listening the last few weeks, um, Magicians Without Borders has this wonderful relationship with the Yale Magic Society. Um, and each January uh, during the intercession, um, we, for the last four years, have gone on um, service magic trips. And uh, I'd love Jen to, she was on the very first one to, no, why yes, we're gonna we're, ball to yes, India. we're we're gonna get right into okay, it. Okay, I don't want to okay. steal your thunder there. Uh, uh, I, I, well, we want to get right into it, but but before before I just wanted to say how how was it founding something like the uh, Yale Magic Society? Like you go you go this to this place that looks like how Howard's uh, that does not have a, a magic club. You started. What were your 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 thoughts on starting it? And, and how was, was it the first year? So to me, community has always been such an important part of being a magician. Uh, I remember when I first got started in magic, I joined the youth chapter uh, of the Society of American Magicians. It's called the Society of Young Magicians. And we used to meet actually originally in the basement of a restaurant called Maui Tacos in Manhattan. So this is the uh, New York assembly. We ended up meeting at Phantasma Magic later on. So starting from, I uh, must've been about, probably about 12 years old then too, 11 or 12. 
until I aged out of the group at age 18, being a part of that group and that community uh, was so important to me and getting a chance to connect with other magicians and really bond over our love of magic and share, you know, share magic slights with each other and just teach each other and become friends. I mean, some of those friendships, uh, some of the people I met when I was 12 years old, 13 years old, are still really close friends to this day. Uh, and so I think community has always been so important to me. And when I went to Yale, um, I thought to myself, you know what, I would love to have a magical community here. And I found some fellow students who also really loved magic and decided, you know what, this is a great opportunity for us to be able to connect and also to be able to share magic with the Yale community, the New Haven community, and uh, ultimately, especially through our partnership with uh, Magicians Without Borders to, to really share magic in a global sense and, and be able to travel together and make a positive difference in the world through magic. So, so cool, because I think what the Yale Magic Society has done or what we have seen from them is, is, is that sense of, come on, come, I cannot say this word, camaraderie. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> That's it. That, that one, yeah. So you they're it. very, you know, they're very close as a group. They, they, they want all of them to, to, to move forward in, in, in their knowledge of magic and, they, and they're very supportive of, of each other regardless of their level in magic of, of each. Uh, and I think that's, that's very, very, very nice to, to see and, 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 and they take that with them when they go to our uh, magic service trip. So, um, so tell us about that. What do you, or your thoughts when it, the, there was this opportunity of saying, hey, it, we're planning a, a, a trip to India, of all places, with the Yale Magic Society and Magicians Without Borders. What were your thoughts on it uh, uh, when you first heard of it? Oh, my gosh. I was thrilled. I was thrilled because here are these two groups that I love so much. There's Magicians mm. Without Borders. And as I mentioned earlier, I had just admired the work that Tom and Janet and the group had done over all of these years and all of those postcards and all of those emails back and forth and just learning and getting involved and being a teaching assistant when I was in high school at the Omega program with Tom. I mean, all of that as I kind of got deeper into the Magicians Without Borders world was uh, was so incredibly inspiring to me. And then there's the Yale Magic Society, which is this group that I also really loved. And I you know, was so excited to see these two groups I care so much about come together to use magic for good. And just to have the chance to, to kind of see those worlds collide and to see that relationship between these two amazing groups continue to flourish uh, has been just, just awesome and so rewarding and just made me so happy, really did. Mm -hmm. So cool, did, and, and, and then we, they said, it. yeah, go ahead, Tom, go ahead. I just wondered, did you know, were you and Alex in uh, SYM together? Yes, so uh -huh. Alex and I, we must have met probably right around the same time that you and I met, Tom, because Alex and I were not only both in the Society of Young Magicians, but we were in the very same assembly, so the very same local chapter in New York together, so... Uh -huh. Alex, uh, Alex is terrific, and I really enjoyed listening to the episode that you both did with Alex last week. And he's uh, he's a great example of someone who, you know, we we first connected when we were probably about twelve years old, thirteen years old, and uh, have stayed friends through the years. And he is just uh, talk about a person with with such a good heart who just cares and is so smart and oh. so eloquent and. Uh, just really, you know, wants to wants to do good in the world. I mean, Alex is Alex is wonderful, and he was just a perfect. Were did did he come to Yale the year after you graduated, or was he a freshman and you were a senior? I couldn't remember. No, we did overlap. We oh, overlap. did overlap. Oh, that's great because yeah. it's like the torch was passed somehow. <laughs> To Alex and he went on to become president and he also had a relationship with magicians. It just was the perfect, the perfect, uh, the universe was right on time, you know, <laughs> sending him there that year. That's yeah. right. That's right. And uh, 
Yeah, I remember when I was listening to the episode, actually, Alex jogged my memory as to when I was in high school, Tom, and we would write back and forth, and um, I did the teaching assistant. I was so excited to, to get to be involved in Magicians Without Borders and to learn more. And so I, I guess at the time, I, I must have been telling Alex about it at one of our Society of Young Magicians meetings, and then I think he reached out to you. And I mean, there's been this fabulous relationship with Alex, and he's you know been a, a just an amazing leader for the Yale Magic Society and Magicians Without Borders and just great at connecting everybody together. Yeah, so, well, that, that's great to hear that because another piece just fell into place because I didn't know how Alex, I don't know whether we actually talked about that or, but that you um, and he and you uh, told him about Magicians Without Borders and then it's funny. He reminded me of it just when I was listening to the episode. I was like, "Oh my gosh, I, that must have been how it how it all uh, came together." But he's, I mean, he's just really done so much in in terms of. I mean, take the India trip as an example. I remember Alex was so on top of things, coordinating all the details that go Absolutely. into making a trip like that possible, and. Uh, you know, and he's so engaging when he performs. And, you know, as I mentioned before, he just really cares. He's doing great work in the world. Uh, oh, he's doing wonderful work. Yeah, yeah so good. So I, I wanted to hear a little bit more about that experience to India, right? So the, the Yale Magic Society and Magicians were able to say, hey, how about we do a, a, a trip, right? And we, we were talking about that with Alex, right? And, and how that idea came about, but it was going to be to India, right? So, so you end up going, right? And I'm sharing a picture right now of, of you surrounded by uh, this uh, audience that is just uh, perplexed at, at, at something that you're doing. I'm trying to figure out what you're doing. But, but what, what were your feelings when you were put in that situation? And were you in a situation like that before the, the trip? Or was this your first? Well, it's, it's like Tom had mentioned on one of your previous episodes in India. He said his first trip to India, he remembers writing home in a postcard. And I, this <laughs> stuck with me because it, it really is something that I related to as well. And he said it feels like every few minutes he just sees something totally new that he hasn't seen before. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think India is really magical in that way. You know, there's just, there, there there's so much, uh, the people are so warm and they're just, so much going on uh, and so i think it it was very new for me in that respect but i think it also really was a great example of just how universal magic is because even though in many cases uh, especially as we went to some of the rural villages uh, people didn't speak English, so there was a language barrier. We were from you know all the way across the world. There were all of these differences and yet we were able to connect with each other through magic. There was that genuine human connection. There was that shared sense of wonder that magic can evoke. Uh, and I think, you know, being being around the world and doing magic, it, it really does show how universal magic is and how magic can just, I mean, it, all of all of those seeming barriers of of language, it, it just doesn't matter. Magic allows us all to connect. And yeah. this photo, it's it's. It's uh, fun to look back on. This happened, I remember, right after one of our shows. And this was at a, a school in rural India. And this photo, uh, my boyfriend Dylan happened to capture. It was truly a candid photo because I didn't know it was taken at the time. But he had somehow managed to, I think there was a, a little rooftop at the school of uh, the school that we were at. And he had somehow climbed onto the rooftop to get this photo. Uh, <laughs> showed it to me after the fact. But, I mean, the kids were just so... Uh, so engaged and and just so interested and they loved magic and it was it was just great to to get the chance to connect with them mm, such a wonderful picture and tom you're over there you know uh, uh lurking behind uh, han, uh, i think, uh, I think lurking that's behind han. Han. yeah uh, i'm pretty sure that's han yeah There's yeah. Han. yeah yeah and what I, were I you thinking picture tom? I've seen this picture many times, but I never noticed that I'm I'm in it down here in the little right hand <laughs> corner. It's great. Um, it you was, know, what were you thinking, Tom? This is a a, a, a Las Vegas performer that has <laughs> her own show on a on a on a hotel uh, on the Westgate, and that you've seen perform live in the in the in the in that theater, and now she's in India, right, yes. with Magicians with the Borders. What were your thoughts? 
around that time. I I just felt um, this was our very first uh, collaborative trip with the Yale Magic Society, and it was just so fitting that Jen, you were there, and um, it just got this. I think it inspired the the trips, and now we've had three more, and uh, it was just wonderful being with. You stayed, uh, we stayed together, didn't we, at Don and Jay's? Did you stay there with yeah. Don, and Don and Jay? Yes, and uh, Don and Jay and Jaya, I remember what wonderful hosts they were. Oh, uh, yeah. They, they are they are just such great people. And, uh, and to be able to experience mm -hmm. India, both with you, Tom, and with Don and Jay, it felt like we we were able to uh, ex experience the, the wonders of India through the eyes of, of two people who really know India so well. And you know, Tommy, you had been there many times, and Don and Jay, of course, knows India super well, and yeah. has so many contacts and connections there as far as setting up shows. And they were just so warm. And talk about—I mean, he and Jaya both just made us feel so at home from the moment we arrived. Absolutely. I, I just got an email from Don and Jay yesterday or the day before. I—I ha I haven't responded yet, but just checking in and saying, you know, he and Jaya are pretty much you know, in quarantine or just really staying close to home. And uh, he's he's our main man for sure in uh, in India. If I, yes. when I've been going there now, you know, 20 years and he, um, when I tell him we're gonna go, he can just pick up his phone and with the speed dial, he can have 25 shows scheduled in, 15 minutes, you know. Yes, exactly. And that's exactly what happened. I, you know, I remember us doing, we'd, we'd do two, three shows every day. And I know. <laughs> it was amazing. It was, it was so great. It was so talk, great. talk a little bit more about that. How, how was that experience of, of performance, uh, like repeatedly, very, very, very close to each other? Uh, how was that uh, on you as a performer? Oh, I, I loved it. Uh, and I think what was really interesting is, uh, I think because there was that language barrier, the material that we would do and the way that we would present that material, I think we would we would adjust. And what's great is like, you know, this, this photo, I remember those kids. And this was uh, at, a, at another school in, uh, in rural India. And I mean, you can see we, we don't speak the same language and yet the magic is able to be communicated. And, you know, just to be able to, to make make them smile, to make them laugh, to be able to share something that I love so much and, and see that they're really loving it too. I mean, it's, it's so, so rewarding. And, and I loved getting the chance to connect with all of them. And I mean, all of Look all at of the expressions, the expressions on their faces. Look at that like fifth kid back, that boy, he's just got his mouth wide open. He's just having, yeah. every face in that group is smiling. It's just amazing. What yeah, a it's, wonderful it, 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 it's a great picture and 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 and, and yeah what, what Jen, Jen is saying is that the power of magic gets through without having the same uh, language right There's, we don't speak the same language but this you can see the power of 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 the performance coming through to to the, those kids there it's just it's yeah. a wonderful picture it's a wonderful <laughs> picture <laughs> and I, I remember when Tom would do his performances. I mean, he he is such a pro at just being able to share magic with with people regardless of language. And and I remember, I mean, well, you know, one of the first times I saw Tom perform uh, in India, and I would you know see it again and again. And he always just engaged them with you know the, the material would be fun and visual, and uh, you know and. and and all of us, I think, adapted our magic and, and we really made sure to focus on the expressions and we made our motions bigger. And I mean, it's amazing how many ways you realize you can really connect with people without using language. You know, even just expressions and tone of voice and, and motions and all kinds of different things you can do. And, and I remember being so inspired watching, uh, watching the way Tom would do that and, and uh, seeing just how well he would connect even, even without, uh, without words. Yeah, I think I think Carlos and I talked about that, or maybe we talked about it even with Alex. Maybe you heard it that somehow uh, at some point I realized 
Uh, we went to Africa first, um, to Ethiopia and the Sudan and Somalia, and very, very few people. Unlike India, you would run into people who could speak English because, you know, the British were there so long. But in Ethiopia and Sudan and Somalia, there's nobody who speaks English in your audience. And um, I had to, like you were saying, uh, Jen, I had to really make things much bigger and much more um, theatrical and dramatic. And um, because my show here in the United States relies a lot on language. I talk a lot and tell stories and uh, humor and all of that stuff, but I couldn't fall back on, you know, one of my main uh, ways of, of performing. So it really changed. I think in a good way, I think every performer should spend, you know, a couple of months performing for people who don't understand their language, you know, um, what you're That's saying. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Jen, would you say that that this kind of, of performance experience that you had in India had helped you in some ways or are, were there any takeaways that you, that there are, are actually applicable to your theater pro professional performance? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, just as just as Tom was saying, I think I think learning to use those other ways of connecting with people, I think, really stretches us as magicians, and is useful even when you have an audience that does speak the same language as you, because mm -hmm. you realize, you know, what you just have more tools in the toolkit. You don't have to just mm -hmm. use the tool of language. There's more there. You know, you can you can communicate to people through uh, just a look can communicate so much or an expression. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think performing in India uh, was was a great example of that. And I think all of us at the Yale Magic Society, uh, uh, you know, from from our conversations together, felt that it made us better performers having these different mm -hmm. performing experiences. And yes, even uh, silence. I, I, no, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Carlos. Please. No, that I just wanted to say that, that yes, that I feel that that for me, when I've had this 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 experiences, you take away small things from each of them, but after you do a bunch of them, you it comes, you know, as as of course any any performance, a, a second nature, and you and you go to them whenever you feel the need. So there, there's been some performances when you when you say, okay, so I know they don't speak the language, I know that it needs to be something visual, but if I connect with, I don't know, the a little guy that it's, you know, very high energy and just won't sit down, won't stay still or whatever, you, you remember what 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 worked before and, and, and you can use it again. But when you're in total control, right? <laughs> so for example, in a, in, a, in a stage, right? Where everything's set up, for you to be there and everyone's there paying attention to you because they are there exclusively to to see your performance you can you you, you can take away some of those aspects as well and i think it's so enriching for a perform performer to be in those kinds of situations where you have complete no control i mean you you, you have no control whatsoever over the audience right yeah that makes total sense. And I mean, even as, as you were mentioning that, it made me think about how different our India experiences were from the shows I had previously done, even in terms of gathering an audience. And uh, Tom, mm -hmm. you, you may remember my favorite story uh, related to this was that we were in uh, Gujarat, India, and uh, we we were welcomed uh, by, by the community there in, in a really great way. and. Uh, many people uh, didn't have cell phones. In fact, if I'm remembering correctly, most people didn't have cell phones. And so the way that you might communicate uh, a show, let's say in, in Las Vegas or, or or most of our, you know, most of our regular performing shows in, in, uh, in the States would be, you know, you might send out an email blast or post something on social media or you might call people or text them. Well, instead, what uh, what they did is I remember there was a there was a young lady and she sort of served as a liaison between us performers and the community. And uh, she didn't speak English. And yet she was so warm and had a wonderful smile. And she motioned to a few of us to uh, to get in a in a car that they had ready. And they had taped a megaphone to the top of the car. 
and she had a microphone and she was saying in their local dialect, we have magicians, magicians from the United States. Jadugar, 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 Jadugar. <laughs> we have a video remembering this moment. And so they, they would drive very slowly down the, uh, down the dirt roads of the community. And people, no matter what they were doing, they might be out in their yards flying a kite. I remember kite flying was, uh, was very popular there. Or, or they might be in their homes having dinner whatever they were doing, people would look out and they would walk out and they would hear that this magic show was being advertised and they would follow the car. And we really gathered quite a crowd. I mean, we must have had, how many people have 80, 90, 100 people yeah. at the show that yeah. night. And it was all from, from gathering people in this uh, very organic way. And she would motion to us. She'd say, Jadugar, Jadugar, right over here. <laughs> So cool. So that cool. happened. That happened in uh, God. I'm just remembering this. One of our very first trips. It was like 2003. We went to Haiti, and we were performing in a little place, um, Valais de Jacques Mal. There's a big town called not a big town, but a major town called Jacques Mal. But then way, way up in the Countryside was Valais, the vi valley of, of, of Jacques Mal. And we went from house to house all day visiting <laughs> people. The, our host wanted to introduce us to everybody. And that night we had a magic show and he told them about the magic show as we traveled for three or four hours throughout the village visiting each house and then in one house it was like one o'clock to in the afternoon and the people said oh you must be tired you've been walking for two hours and we took a, a nap there we slept in their house and when we woke up they had a little lunch for us oh. and then we went on for a couple more hours very much like Gujarat but uh, without the car you know, and uh, <laughs> That's a great memory. I had forgotten that. That's really terrific. Yeah, so cool, so cool. I, I just thought about the, the trip to here in Colombia. One of those shows, there was one time in a town called Duitama. We had to split up yeah. the team because there were so many shows that day. We, we had to split up the team. And uh, the team that came with me, we went to, to like picture like the slums of a very small town in South America. <laughs> so it was, you know, this little town, the back of, of a church, we were setting everything up. There was a big sun, and they say, oh, say they, they told one of the kids, so go gather the kids for the show. And this guy goes out screaming to the top of his lungs, <laughs> saying, ah, oh, the magic show is about a star. The magic. But you can hear the kid, and, and you can hear his voice getting... You know, uh, the volume got lower and lower because he was further away, further away until you couldn't hear him. And then you started hearing him. The volume came up, <laughs> up uh, as he came closer to the show. And that's how they gathered the, the crowd. <laughs> it's amazing. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah, we'll have to try yeah. that in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, and see how it goes. <laughs> Jump I'd up on a great. car with a megaphone. That would be so cool. <laughs> I've seen wonderful, I think it was, Valentine's Day footage of you on the streets of Las Vegas doing uh, doing card magic for for what is that an accurate yes. memory? Yes, yes, yeah. I, I'm impressed that you remember that. You had you had some, I don't know, it was an anniversary. I forget what card trick it was, but uh, I think uh, lips uh, kissing ended up on it, or hearts, or I forget, but it was beautiful. Uh, I remember one black guy just going crazy in that video with your magic. He was just so um, beside himself with uh, delight. Yeah. Thank you. I remember meeting such great people that day. It was a, a video that I shot on the Las Vegas Strip, and every magic trick that I did in the video was Valentine's Day themed. And I remember... Oh connecting with lots of people who were just visiting Las Vegas. And I would uh, show them some magic and we captured it on video for social media. And uh, it, I mean, it, to me, it, it, it was uh, 
it was a great example of magic being such an icebreaker because these yeah. were strangers, these were people we had never connected before. And I just, I remember even now, a few years later, uh, they were such nice people and we, we really yeah. had a lot of fun doing magic that day. So thank you for remembering that, Tom. Was that Valentine's Day? It was, good memory. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do remember it having a Valentine's Day uh, theme to it. It was a wonderful, wonderful video. Oh, thank you. That must have been a while ago. Thank you, it was. That was a few years ago now. How many years have you been in Vegas now? So I graduated from Yale in 2014 and then moved out to Las Vegas. So it's been uh, about six years. Six years. Oh, so wow. Cool. wow. So cool, Jen. That's great. And I'm sharing this picture because of what, what where I want to go next, right? So you're here, you know, spending some time with, with some girls after a show, I guess. Yes. Um, a, and you know, in this picture, you're you know you're playing around with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other women, right? Young women. And a, I, I just wanted to say that, of course, me growing up, a, if I looked up to magicians, they, they looked similar to me, right? You could see Lance Burton, you can see um, David Copperfield, you can see David Blaine, right? Those big, or, or here in Colombia, Gustavo Lorgia, you know, Carlos Sea, those, those were, were, you know, guys doing magic. And uh, now you, 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 you're a headliner on, on, on a show in, in, in Las Vegas, right? And I remember when, when uh, I shared with one of our students here that I was going to talk today with a um, Las Vegas performer, right? And, uh, and she said, oh, what's, what's, she instinctively said, what's his name? A, 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 and I say, well, it's, it's Jen Kramer. And she said, Jen, that, that, that's a weird name. And then I showed her a picture, right? And she, she was like, oh, it's a girl, right? It's that, that moment of, 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 of all like saying, oh, and she connecting with, wow, you know, look, she has a show in Las Vegas, right? Like, like wow. So, uh, I think that's, uh, of course, uh, groundbreaking. It's it's ridiculous that we need to say groundbreaking in 2020, but it is. So I just wanted to to hear your take on it. Like, what's your take on 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 women in magic and you, uh, you know, headlining a, a, a show in Las Vegas? In Las Vegas, what do you think that's doing for for women in magic? I am such a supporter of fellow women in magic and. Uh, you're right, Carlos, that magic has definitely historically been a very male-dominated field, but I really see it heading in a direction where more and more women are getting involved. And I think a great example of that is in that Society of Young Magicians group that Alex and I were a part of for all those years. And I remember from age 12 to 18, when I was a part of the group, it was always me and it was 15 to 20 boys. And now the group has several girls who are a part of it. And I think that really shows, uh, you know, just as a, in, in one group situation, I think it really paints a picture of what's happening in the magic world as a whole, which is that I think more and more women are becoming magicians and are seeing magic as a possibility. And um, I find that really exciting because I think that diversity in magic is so incredibly important. And I think uh, diversity in all ways, whether that's uh, geographic diversity, diversity of age, of race, of gender. I just think when, when you have more diversity in magic, magic as a whole is richer. Magic as a whole, the whole community benefits. And so it's really exciting to me to see fellow women in magic uh, continue to uh, continue to grow in magic and to be able to support each other and to raise each other up. And uh, I just uh, very, very excited to, to have the opportunity to, uh, to do my show in Las Vegas. And there have been uh, some, some great, great female headliners in Vegas in the past. Um, and it's, it's uh, something that I'm just so really grateful to, to have the chance to, uh, to be doing right now. Yeah, the, the, best, the best magician in our group in India is Priyanka, a woman. The best magician, it seems, in El Salvador is Kimberly. And certainly the best magician or the most involved or the one who seems to have taken it the furthest in Colombia 
it's Tamara, you know? Uh, so that that's, I hope we, we're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The women are rising to the top, you know? Yes, the top. I remember even years ago being in high school and you would send me um, uh, emails when you had visited a, a Prerana in India. And, oh, yeah. And I mean, to, to be able to meet the, the girls, the, the women who are a part of that program in person on our India trip. Oh, that's was right. Special because I had heard all about them and talk about uh, talk about a, a really fantastic group. I remember they showed us their magic room and we sat and got to magic jam wow. together and perform together. And uh, I mean, they're really, really wonderful. They're wonderful yeah. young women. They are. Yeah. They are. And, and, and yes, I think Magicians Without Borders does uh, 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 an important role of trying to empower women in, in the male-dominated magic world, but but it's so cool to, when they can connect with with you know a role model, and and we see this because in one of the first episodes we talked with Kimberly from El Salvador, and we shared the video of her performance, the performance that she did, and she talks about how it, she was so eager to start her her journey in the world of magic. But she knew it was going to be hard because women are mostly considered to be the magician's assistant, mm -hmm. and 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 that's that's something that's that's out there. And so she having something a, something to look up to, like Jen being a, a performer in, in, in a headlining performer in Las Vegas, is wonderful. But I, I I also see it with Tamara, as Tom says, as you know, a, a, me being like the teacher of the education chapter in Bogota. Right, you know, they look up to me somehow, yeah. But when Tamara is the teacher, I can't the understand game. why they look up to you. <laughs> it's I weird, but they do. You, you know? It's like I don't know why, but they they, they somehow <laughs> do. But but the connection that they they have with me is it's microscopical to the connection that the new students, especially the new girl students, have with Tamara. Right, because oh, that so that good. connection is is just it's of course women at that age are so much brighter than guys, and and they just make the connection right away. Like I can be her, right? And oh, we just got one of uh, Spain's greatest uh, uh, now uh, young women magicians, Ma Marta, just uh, just being there, uh, just saying hi on on Facebook. So ah. great that we were talking about that. So <laughs> hey, Marta, saludos hasta España. So, it, and I think that's wonderful. I, I, just that 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 connection to somebody that looks more like me, I think it's just wonderful. Yeah, thank yes. you. And I'm I'm always so excited to meet other other uh, women in magic. And I think you know people ask all the time about challenges of being a woman in magic. And I think you know while while there are some challenges, for example, many of the traditional magic books are written with men in mind. So. You know, as a as a woman, you might need to adapt clothing to to make the magic work for you, for example. But I also think that you know it it really provides opportunities. And if you look at it from that perspective, uh, I think it it provides a, a chance to get creative and to think about different ways of doing things. So it's always exciting to me to see uh, what what the other women in magic are are doing and and all the amazing work that they're doing to advance magic as a whole. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just remember the conversation I had with Tamara because uh, right around the time that we were doing real like in, important performances for them, like they they really needed to you know change the way they dress because they wanted to be more professional and all of that. It, I remember she coming up to me and she saying, "Hey, Carlos, you know, can I wear a skirt?" Right, and I was like, "Like, yes, why not?" Like, like like I couldn't have a, a position on that right and and, and we, we ended up saying yeah let's do it and she tried on the skirt she looked great but then she's like so what do i do for pockets and i'm like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, I, I felt so not prepared to answer those questions i remember i quickly dialed somebody some some somebody on my phone looking female mag magicians that i know that could you know help me out right now and there was there's this great venezuelan magician who is now living in spain her name is dania 
and she's a wonderful car magician. I, 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 she was in Colombia at the time. I, I, I tried to call. She picked up. I'm like, hey, can you please help me with this issue? And I talked to her. And she, but for her, it was, of course, natural. And she helped me a lot. And remember, Tamara feeling more comfortable after that conversation saying, hey, mm -hmm. now I know how and, and what that I, I could wear and that I couldn't, can't be myself, you know? It, it was so, I don't know, it, it caught great. me by surprise. That, that That's great. That, um, and and I think wonderful. that story shows what a wonderful mentor you are also. I mean, both, yeah. both of you. I think, um, uh, you know, I, I remember Alex was talking about this in the last episode too, but, you know, Tom, Tom has been a mentor to so many people over the years and has, I think, you know, really helped shape so many magicians and inspire them to use their magic to make a positive difference in the world. And Carlos, I mean, you you do the same. And in the last few years, as I've gotten to know you, it's like Alex said, uh, you're, you have so many brilliant ideas and so many different, uh, just just great ways to to contribute to Magicians Without Borders and to the world. And so it's uh, it's really been such a pleasure to to get to know you better and to work with you on the advisory board. Oh, yes, Jen. We're so, so glad that you're there. Thank you for those words. And and thank you for what you do. This is your a uh, poster. This is the, the image of the, the magic of Jen Kramer, you know, at the West Gate in Las Vegas. So how about you tell us a little bit more about... Uh, what has been this been show meant to, to you and when are you coming back and, and, and anything else you want from the show? Sure. Uh, so it had been a, a long time dream of mine to have a residency. Oh, look at that, Tom. You have <laughs> oh, I'm so honored. I'm so Tom honored. Has, uh, I have it right on my desk. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just had to do that. <laughs> That's so cool. Look at this big smile. That's so cool. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. But I, I just I feel so grateful uh, to have the chance to, to do my show at Westgate. And Westgate's a special place. It really feels like family. Uh, it it has so much history associated with the property. Uh, Elvis Presley performed hundreds of shows at that same property and, and just wow. to have the chance to to perform my show at, at the place where so many legendary performers have been and to have the chance to work with so many wonderful people. I mean, I love love my team, the people I work with at Westgate. And as I mentioned, it really feels like a family. And getting to share magic with audiences every night, I mean, that, that really, uh, is what I love to do and you know getting to connect with people from all around the world uh, it's so so meaningful to me and um, uh, it's I, I just I'm just incredibly grateful it's you know I'm grateful to have the chance to do my show I'm grateful to have the chance to be involved in Magicians Without Borders uh, just just a lot of a lot of gratitude uh, we don't know yet when exactly the show will be coming back it is currently on pause due to COVID but hopefully soon and I can't wait to be back on stage. Uh, oh, Carlos, God. Carlos, when you were uh, looking at one of those pictures of Jen performing in India, and mm -hmm. you mentioned how different it is than performing, you know, on a stage with lights and everything set, and you know, and the audience is there in seats and they have their drink and everything is orderly. But yep. even the show that I saw, uh, Jen does something at the beginning and the end, and she has a box up in the air, and it all is very wonderful. Uh, but there was a lot of spontaneity and a lot of improv and working with, it was a mother and a daughter thing, and it was, um, yeah, it wasn't a set piece. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. You really responded to the moment in a, a wonderful improvisational way. It was great. Thank you. That that means so much to me uh, to, to hear you say that, especially coming from you, Tom. And yeah, uh, I think that's I mean, that's we, we, we need to have scripts, but the scripts help us to improvise. You know, right. and I've yeah. always been such a believer in scripts because I think that scripts allow you to deviate from the script. Absolutely. And, and what I love is, mm -hmm. and, and I've seen this happen in in your shows too, Tom, where you'll. You know, you'll have maybe a wonderful audience volunteer and just decide to improv with that person. And I think audiences can sense when something is happening, especially for them. I think an audience knows when, oh my goodness, this, this, this is really a genuine connection. This is a moment that doesn't happen every single night. This is something no. based on a response yeah. that someone in the audience might have said. Uh, and I think it really, it really helps the audience feel 
um, hopefully connected to you, which at yeah. the end of the day, I mean, what's what's more important than that human connection? So that, that really means a lot to, to hear you say that. Thank you, Tom. The greatest oh, compliment I ever got was from this man, Robert Blair, who owned a bookstore in Middlebury, Vermont, near right near where I live. And he used to come to my shows. He was just a great lover of magic. And he said to me after a show once, it was absolutely the best compliment I've ever received in 45 years. He said, you know, I've seen your show many times and every time it looks like you're doing it for the first time. You know, oh, nice. It, yeah. you know, it's, it's not called phoned in or it's not, you know, and I felt that way seeing your show, Jen, you know, you're just, it's alive, you know, it's not, um, yeah. So cool, so cool. I can't so wait to see I so it. That. Yeah, I so I, I can't wait to that you're back uh, there that I can get to go and see it. It would be awesome. I would love so, to have you there. That would be amazing, Carlos. That would be so cool. So I know you, finish, speaking of shows, I know you have a show to get to, Carlos. Uh, yes, we need to wrap this up. So, Jen, we always end this show with one question, and it's a uh, it goes is something like this. So, Jen, do you think that you, Jen, are different because of the experience that you had with Magicians Without Borders? And if so, in what way? Without a doubt. I know we touched on it before, but I think Magicians Without Borders has really showed me firsthand just how universal magic is and just how much we can impact people in a positive way through magic. Um, and I'll, I'll also add that I think Alex had uh, such a such a wonderful answer to this question when when you interviewed him and it and it really was something that I connected to as well. And for anybody who hasn't seen that interview, um, I think you'd, you'd really enjoy seeing it. Uh, and his his answer, in addition to uh, to saying you know the wonderful people and, and friendships that have been made, which of course I, I completely agree with, but he also pointed out that it gave him this balance of confidence and ability, uh, confidence to enter all kinds of unexpected situations and feel at ease, and yet at the same time, humility, as he realized that the more he knew, the the more he realized he didn't know. And I heard him say that and thought, wow, I can, I can really relate to that. And I think uh, having experiences through Magicians Without Borders does really give a performer uh, that, that balance and, and just you know, makes you realize as well, just magic is so universal and connecting with people is ultimately what's so important. And so I'm just, uh, again, incredibly grateful to be involved in Magicians Without Borders and uh, and to know both of you and to to have our, our friendships through the years. And thank you so much for uh, for inviting me to be on the show. It's been a yeah, pleasure. So cool. this, is was, this was amazing, Jen. Couldn't, couldn't have imagined it. A, a, a better. I loved hearing your stories. I love the support. This was awesome. Tom, thank you for being here. So we're signing off. See you next week. I just bye want bye. to say one more time Go how ahead. blessed we are to have you, Jen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, totally. uh, thank you so much. Thank you to you both. Okay. And, and an invaluable addition to Magicians Without Borders. Definitely. Have a great show tonight, Carlos. Thank you. Yes, have a great show, Carlos. Break a leg. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay.